Hey Cactus friends, it's Jenny from Cookies Cacti. We have just entered into July. Today as I am recording it is July 6th of 2024. This summer has been pretty darn nasty out here in Chandler, Arizona. So Chandler is about 20 miles or so outside of the city of Phoenix. We have very extreme summers. Uh, we are in the Sonoran Desert and we should be in like monsoon season right now, but the rains really haven't come in yet. And I'm really concerned that this is gonna be another summer like last year, which was so nasty. My weather station says that it's 117 degrees in here. And I'm gonna throw up our 10 day forecast for Chandler, Arizona. Now, as high as the highs are, the more concerning part is the really high lows. So then the topic of do cactus and succulents go into summer dormancy is really important at this time of the year, especially here. And I'm going to talk on this in terms of my very limited experience, but based off of my experience, not what I've read, not what other people have told me, but based off of my own experience. And I have to start with a disclaimer that I am not an expert by any means. I'm only about four years into this whole cactus hobby, about three years and change on potted cactus. So I'm still a beginner. But in the three years, I've been through what, three summers now or so with these potted cactus. And I have learned a thing or two just from experience and not necessarily from what other people tell me. So when you look at a 10 day forecast like this, would you say that the cactus and succulents go into summer dormancy? I would imagine that the general answer might be yes. However, I have found the answer to be slightly different. In my experience, some succulents go dormant and I cannot speak on all of them because I only have you know, so many different genus of plants. I can only speak on the ones that I have experienced, the ones that I have. So I'll tell you this much. For the succulents that I know for sure go into dormancy, let me show you. Aloe. You all know that I have really struggled with soft leaf succulents, especially like the Echeveria types, like all those really colorful and beautiful succulents. And I have lost a lot of aloe. When the nighttime temperatures go somewhere above 80 or 85 degrees, I don't water aloe anymore. I lost so many aloe last summer that I don't buy any more aloe. As many of you have probably heard me say so many times when I go you know, on my shopping videos. As you can see, this is a bowl of aloe. I think it's Brevifolia, could be wrong. And you'll notice that the bowl is sparse. <laughs> it used to be completely full, but the center plant completely died and these are its remaining pups. And it died last summer when I would keep these aloe kind of with all my other cactus and succulents. And when I watered the other plants, these guys would get watered too, and then they would end up rotting. So I know for sure that aloe do go dormant in the summer when it gets really hot overnight, because I experience a lot of die off. These are some old aloes too. Now, do all aloe experience a die-off? I can't say. I can only say on the aloe that I've had. Surprisingly, these guys still get watered because they get accidentally watered with my other cactus, but they haven't rotted. So some aloe do go dormant. Do all aloe go dormant? I can't answer that question. So do keep that in mind. So how about agave? You can see I have a number of agave here. I also have agave outside of this pergola area. You can see that they're still alive. And I would say that in my experience with agave, I have never experienced a die off in the summer with them, even when it's this hot. And I'm watering them about once a week or so. The other cactus that I have not experienced going into dor summer dormancy are Areocarpus and Astrophytum. Now again, I live in an area that is extremely hot, but it's also very arid, very, very dry, low humidity, at least in the hottest summer parts of our summers. When the monsoons come in, the humidity kicks up by quite a bit, but also our temperatures start to fall. But right now it is extremely hot and it's extremely dry. 
And I have found that my astrophytum and the aerial carpus have never gone dormant. Even last summer of 2023, which was one of our nastiest summers we've ever had, I was watering these guys probably once every one to two weeks. And how I would know that they weren't going dormant is that they would get squishy when they're thirsty. Let me see, I have an example here. Yeah, this one's already starting to get squishy. I don't know if you can tell, but they get squishy like that. I water it deeply and it plumps back up. That tells me the plant is still taking water in and it's still growing. So therefore the plant is not dormant. And the same thing with the aerial carpus. They would desiccate over time. And the nice thing is that they are squeezable. Some of these are getting kind of thirsty. I don't know if you can see the give on there, but that's getting thirsty. I'll give that a nice deep drink. It will plump back up. Therefore, it's not dormant. So even in our long stretches of, let's say, a month of these really high temperatures and the high overnight lows, these guys I have never seen go dormant. And that's just from my experience. And it's only for me, even for those of you who are watching from the Phoenix area, my microclimate is probably different from yours. You know, the side that my yard is on, that I'm west facing that direction, is probably different from yours. Maybe you have trees in the yard, or maybe your neighbors have trees in the yard, or they water their yard in a certain way. So our microclimates are not even going to be the same, despite being in the same city or even the same desert. So my experience has been more like a lot of the North American cactus. I don't feel like they go dormant, but I only have so many North American genera. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. Here's some astrophytum seedlings and they look like they've been growing. The pharaoh cactus, they get desiccated um, and then they need a drink. I actually watered these probably six days ago they were starting to get wrinkly and now they've plumped back up. Mammillaria, uh, really hard to say. I watered these guys and they haven't died, so that's a good thing. However, what about the South American cactus? Now, that is still up in the air for me. I would say that mellow cactus, I don't see them going dormant. They actually need a bit of water. Like this one I've had, this is one of my oldest potted plants. It's a mellow cactus uh, waras, warazii. It's from B&B Cactus Farm down in Tucson. And this guy actually wants water when it's this hot. So I haven't seen this one go dormant either. I think the fellow cactus also, when they get wrinkly, I water them and they plump back up. Same thing with the gymnocalisium. I haven't seen them really go dormant either. Now this summer dormancy topic comes up quite a bit and Anna of Cactus Caffeine does, she, she did probably two or three videos on summer dormancy and she covers her experience of what she has lost or what she has done well with on certain types of cactus in the summer. Now she has more rebutia and plants like that, which I don't have. I think I might have one rebutia. Interestingly, it's still alive despite being watered uh, in the summer, but I just have so few of those plants that I cannot make any kind of conclusive statements on that. So it depends on the plant, depends on your climate, depends on the grower as well. Saguaro, so I do see them get desiccated over the summer and they get start, like if you look at their skin, they get kind of wrinkly and then I'll give them a nice water and they'll plump back up. So I don't see the saguaro going dormant either. So now what about the copiapoa? To me, that is still up in the air. That die-off that I had recently, I still don't 100% know what caused it. Could it be the heat? Maybe. But look, these guys are still alive. I've heard the comment before that Copiapoa don't like it in Phoenix. They melt in the heat. Well, do they? Some of these don't look like they're melting. Now, whether they go dormant or not, I can't really answer that question yet. I need more time. This is the first summer for these seedlings to be outdoors, so I can't make any conclusion uh, until the season is over, at least. And one season isn't even enough either. Some more Copiapoa seedlings over here. Do they melt in the heat? Maybe some do, but some don't. 
Let me go show you one of the oldest Copiapola that I've had in my collection. It's not very impressive though. Let me go show you that one. This is a Copiapola Esmeraldana that I've had the longest. I think I've had it for possibly three years or a little bit longer. You can see it doesn't look that happy and not that healthy, but it has stayed alive for all this time. I leave it out here. It has experienced at least three summers now and it's not dead. It's not happy, but it's not dead. I water this kind of along with everything else, to be honest, and it hasn't melted. Now, the statement's also another disclaimer. What I say today may not apply for tomorrow. So take everything you hear, everything you read with a grain of salt. The only real way to figure things out really is just to experience it and figure out what works for you and what doesn't. And unfortunately, some of that what doesn't has to be learned the hard way. You'll see that this Areocarpus is grafted. It's probably showed up in some video in the past, like a haul video. And it's on a totem pole stalk, and you can see it's actually quite squishy right now, which indicates to me that it might be thirsty. So I'll probably give it a nice deep drink and it will pump back up. Now, this squeeze test is not 100% foolproof. Sometimes when you squeeze it, yes, it means the plant is thirsty. Sometimes you squeeze it, maybe it has already lost all its roots and it has gone dormant. So yes, it means it's thirsty, but it may not have any way of taking up water. So if you water it, it might rot. Sometimes they're squishy because maybe they're already rotting. So if you water it, it will probably just continue rotting. So squeeze tests are not 100% foolproof either. However, it is something, you know, over not being able to squeeze a plant. I have these very rough looking hypogea. They've been sitting out here for at least two or three summers as well. They're not the happiest looking. They were sold to me in pretty rough shape. I think they had been eaten by rats and rodents and stuff. They've managed so far to survive our summers, although they don't look the best, and they've actually produced quite a bit of seeds for me as well. So is it dormant? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I have one Copiapoa seedling that's inside that shade house. Let's go in there and check on it because I kind of used it as a little bit of a guinea pig. I watered it about six days ago because it was looking thirsty. I think it was actually featured in my graft update video and I gave it a good water and let's go see if it's dead. Okay, this is the Copiapoa that looked like it was desiccating and I watered it. And look, it's still desiccating. So maybe it is dormant. Doesn't look too happy. You know what, I'm gonna move it down here to some more shade. Let's see if that helps. I don't know. It's really strange because last year I put about a dozen of these Copiapoa seedlings into this shade house and I let them experience that terrible, terrible summer and I treated them like all my other cactus. Watered it once a week, once every couple weeks and they did fine. But this year I feel like things have changed and I don't know why. Maybe they got older. Maybe they can hold water longer. I don't know. Do Copiapoa melt in the heat? Maybe, maybe some do, maybe some don't. This doesn't look too good. But are those dying because of too much water or too little water? Some of these I have, I think these two pots I have watered deeply as an experiment. So I really cannot answer the question on whether Copiapoa go summer dormant and whether they melt in the heat. Um, it's gonna take, one summer may not even be enough to answer that question either. We need a few summers. Plus these are still very young and growing. So we really don't know until they get older. These colors are looking pretty bleached. Could it be baking in the heat? Maybe, I don't know. So I know many of you are way more experienced at growing cactus and succulents than I am. What do you observe in your experience? What do you observe in your greenhouse, in your grow space? Leave a comment below on what you see actually going dormant, not just of what you read or what somebody told you, but from what you actually experienced yourself. And if you could also leave, um, you know, at least a general location of where you're at, perhaps a little, little bit about your climate that would be great 
the comments I'm making here in Phoenix can be completely different from s uh, someone living in Houston or someone living in Miami or in Oregon or in Columbus, Ohio. You know, just because I said, I don't see aerial carpus and astrophytum going dormant in the summer, that's only for me. That doesn't mean it applies to you. So take everything you hear, everything you read with a grain of salt. Of course, exercising caution and being more on the conservative side is probably the you know, least risky, especially when a lot of these plants are you know, quite an investment. The last thing I wanna show you is that the ambient temperature in here, according to my weather station, is about 117 degrees. My phone says that Chandler's about 113 degrees right now. These plants, though their actual temperature, let me show you. I've got this little infrared thermometer I actually use for cookies fluids when I'm warming them up. If we take a look at what the soil temperature is, it says it's 119, and what about the plant? 119, oh, 120 degrees. Let's take a look over here, it's even more shaded because it's about four o'clock in the afternoon now. 120, see the plant. 122 or so. Now these plants that are in a little bit more sunlight, let's ch take a look. 129 degrees, the soil surface and the plant itself. 129 degrees as well. See the soil surface, 131 degrees. The plants, 120 five degrees. Let's do another sampling. It's aerial carpus. Hundred and... I was in mid-sentence and then my camera shut off because it overheated. So I'm about to overheat too. I actually threw the camera into my refrigerator for a little bit. So the closing comments on this topic of summer dormancy is, it depends. You have to be very careful when you think about one statement doesn't cover all cases. By the way, do you see that astrophytum is in flower, so it's probably not dormant. This gymnocalisium is in flower too, so probably not dormant. This is Cochimia grammii, which are native to Arizona and to this area of Arizona. This is actually the first time I'm seeing them flower. Probably not dormant. Even this is Lia isliensis. It's flowering. So even in this extreme heat, they're still flowering. For those of you who would be willing to share in your experience of growing cactus in general, what do you see when it, when it comes to summer dormancy? Which plants, which genera of, of cactus and succulents do you see going dormant? And how do you know? Stay cool, y'all. I need to go inside. I'm gonna overheat myself. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye. Myrtilla cactus is another plant that I don't see going dormant in the summer. I water these guys all the time and they're totally fine. Trichocereus don't seem to like our heat too much either, but sounds stressed. I water this about once a week too, and it's fine. Portulacaria afra has no problem in this heat. I mean, I have it out growing in full sun and it's fine. Water this every week as well. It actually would prefer more water. A couple of Oreo serious. I don't see these guys going dormant either. I actually feel like they like water. But again, take everything I say with a grain of salt. It's agave, they like water. Okay, the bujum, definitely dormant. No leaves at all. I do give it a little spray with everything else just so it doesn't completely, you know, dry, completely dry up. You can see there's a little bit of green in the middle, still alive. Euphorbia. No, they're still alive. I water these if they give an indication if, if they're squeezy, like squeezable. Oh, it's so firm. I just watered it, I think, six days ago. I don't see these guys going dormant either in the heat. So that's my comment for now. My comment for now doesn't necessarily apply for tomorrow, so we'll see. I have a feeling this is going to be a really nasty summer. Oh, stay cool, y'all, if you're in the northern hemisphere. Take care. Bye-bye.